Yeah, welcome to DBA TV, where we discuss everything international trade. Uh, in this series, you are going to be learning about what each of the Nigerian states have to offer as far as export is concerned. You know, I have maintained that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars and that they can be self-sufficient. But, you know, because the number of governors comes in, with not the intention of generating income, but with the intention of sharing the money. Uh, but in this particular episode, we have put together a series of videos for all the Nigerian states from Abia to Zamfara. And this will enable the new governors that are coming in or the new administration in different states of the country to be able to take a cue from what we've shared in this video, which, by the way, covers the peculiarity of each state apart from the preamble. It talk about the profile of the profit, oh, sorry, of the debt <laughs> and income of the state. It talk about the potential of the state. It talk about the purchaser of the product the state have to offer. And of course, the pro pro exportable product and also the proposal we have for the state and how the state can directly profit from exporting raw materials, manufactured goods, uh, solid minerals, and agri commodity. I believe this will be of interest to you and maybe to your governor or the commissioner, wherever it is in your state. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your, uh, yourself as you learn through what maybe your state is what we are looking at today, what Nigerian state have to offer. Happy listening. Thank you very much. All right. All right, so we'll be starting right away. So as usual, every week we go from preamble to peculiarity of the state. We talk about the profile of each state in Nigeria. We talk about the uh, potential. We talk about the purchaser. We talk about the proposal. We talk about the profit. And this is done every week to be able to uh, just basically summarize the opportunities available in every state in Nigeria. And the goal of this program basically is to expose the fact that every state in Nigeria has something to offer as far as export business is concerned. Every state can export. Every state can achieve that desired goal of growing their export volume. If the state only focus on the opportunity that is available within the export space. So today we are looking at Zamfara State. Uh, as I've done every week, Zamfara State must export. Why must they export? Or why should we support export from Zamfara State? To avoid overdependence on federal allocation or federal government, Number two, to boost the GDP of the state, to create opportunity for SME to grow, to decrease dependence on domestic market, to end export proceeds and grow revenue of the state. I hope the opinion that export can help to grow revenue and income of the state. It makes farming and rural life become more lucrative in the state because of the increased demand or the likely increase in demand for such products. It can also help the state to gain global recognition and market share. Global recognition and market share. It can make the state to become home of creativity and innovation because if you play in the international market and you see the way your competitors are pack packaging their products, you see the level of quality of their product, and that will definitely affect in the export market. You are forced also to follow suit. It's an industrialization catalyst. It's a job creation opportunity for the people in the state. It can help the state to know the value of what the state has as competitive advantage. It can help the state to leave for others to follow, make the state. To be independent of federal government, and of course, there are numerous incentives available in export that the state can take advantage of. It creates an opportunity for, for indigenous of the state to maximize the um, indigenous of the state abroad, a huge opportunity, actually. 
Poverty eradication in the state, help the state to quit the league. Help the state to quit the league of state depending on wasting assets like oil, revive the economy of the state, slow down rural and urban migration, task free opportunity for exporters in the state, utilizing the IB capacity of the state, utilizing the IB capacity of the state, it also helped to boost the viability of the state. Wealth creation opportunity for people in this state, um, extract the potential of export in the state, help the state to yearn for more improved of competition, and of course, zero in on, on, uh, on the area of strength in each of the states. So what do you see in Nigeria today? You know, I ask this question every time and I keep asking it. You know, I was on a radio show yesterday and someone called in. I was talking about uh, the South South State. You know, we, we are doing a version of this kind of program on radio in conjunction with um, our partner, Stambik IBTC. So I, I was, and someone asked a question and was complaining about the fact that there are challenges and the fact that some of the things being said are not realistic. And I responded and said, when a foreigner coming to Nigeria, the only thing they see is opportunity, but we as a citizen of Nigeria, we only see the challenges. And as long as we see only the challenges, of course, only the foreigner will enjoy the opportunity of our country. And I said, I'm not holding brief for the government. Of course, government is not doing enough. They have a lot they have to do, but that's not denying the fact that Today in Nigeria, there is a very huge opportunity. Today in Nigeria, there is a very, very huge opportunity being an export. And this is likely being explored by foreigners. We can't take that away. The data released by government every year shows the volume of trade being done from Nigeria of which foreigners take the lead. So you can choose to see unemployment in Nigeria. You can choose to see poverty in Nigeria. You can choose to see frustration in Nigeria, but we implore you to begin to see opportunities in farming, opportunities in mining, and of course, opportunities in our population. Opportunities in farming, opportunities in mining, and of course, opportunities in our population. We'll go on a short break when we return, we'll begin to discuss and dig deeper into the state, Zamfara State. Are you thinking about to maximize export opportunities in Africa under the AFCFTA? Are you looking for where to get the detailed export market information for almost all African countries? Are you looking for the item of import in different African countries and the value of import done by different countries? then visit the African Trade Intelligence Platform via the globaltradetutor.com. You can have access to all this information every month for just $20 only. For more information, call this number or send an email to the email address below. All right. So what are the peculiarity of the state? What are the peculiarities of this state called Zamfara State? What are the peculiarities of Zamfara State? What are the peculiarities of Zamfara State? Zamfara State was carved out of um, Chokoto State, October 1, 1996, by General Sonia Abacha. It's the capital. The capital is Guso, situated in the north flank of Nigeria. Zamfara State occupied 39,762 kilometers. Share border with Shokoto, Niger Republic, Kasina, Kaduna, Niger, and Kebi. Have opportunities for investment in light manufacturing, opportunity for investment in light manufacturing, tourism,
Sorry. Light manufacturing, agri, healthcare, tourism, energy, and mining. Total landmass already stated this. This state has 14 local governments. Population is about 5 million people. So the population of Zamfara State is huge. Population of Zamfara State is huge. 5.3 million people. So it's a state that is worthy of consideration uh, as far as export is concerned. Vegetation hot, semi-arid and tropical savanna. Major crops, millet, guinea corn, maize, rice, potato, wheat, tomato, granite, corn, uh, tobacco, beans. Solid minerals, iron, gold, copper, tantalite, and ma manganese. This state has the largest deposit of solid minerals, 30% of land cultivable. Season of Nigerian solid minerals, this is for our state, from iron, alluvial gold, clay, kaolin, chromate, granite, limestone quartz. Like I said earlier, there's opportunity for investment in livestock manufacturing rice, potato, wheat, tomato, poultry, beans, mineral exploration and processing. This state span two distinctive vegetative zones, Sudan in the Sudan and Northern Guinea Savannah. And Northern Guinea Savannah. Working population of this state is 20, is um, 2 million, 2.5 million. Those not in labor force is about 1 million people. By the way, this is at 2020, so you can imagine what it is today. So you can see the number right now with a high level of unemployment. Look at the death profile of the state, 112 billion naira. That's the death profile of Zamfara State. You will notice something that the income of the state, for example, 12.96 billion naira IGR, 40.78 recurrent expenditure. That immediately tells you something. Zamfara State is incapable of meeting its own need. This state spends more than times three of its revenue in recurrent. I'm not talking about capital, recurrent. That tells you also the fact that this state cannot survive without federal allocation. This state cannot survive without federal allocation. According to budget, Nigerian state called Zamfara State is estimated to be 5.13 million people. In 2020, has a budget of 127 billion called Budget of Peace and Renewal. The sum of 58.2 was allocated for recurrent and 69 allocated for capital. However, the state extended spending Spending up, uh, extended up spending 47 billion on recurrent expenditure and 41 on capital. The bulk capital spending carried out by this state in 2020 was executed on economic affairs related activities on housing and the community am amenities, with the former getting 19 billion and latter 10. Interestingly, the state executed a capital spend of 1.5 on recreation, that's culture, while critical social sector like health and education could only assess, can you imagine, 4% and 1.6%. 
So obviously the state is not really taking education and health very seriously. Although having earned a total recurrent revenue of 59.9, that for exceeded is 2020 projection by 59.84, of 59.84 by 0.15%. Owing to oil price, oil price, I mean oil price induced reduction in Accra to the Federation account in 2020, the state receive a statutory allocation, statutory allocation of 38.82 billion converses and for agrees IGR by 11% from 5.94 to 6.6. Therefore, I had one of the highest year on year increase in his total debt as his debt profile rose by 29.76%. The state exceeded the budget, the debt servicing limit as stipulated in his budget 2020, wide budget 3.71 for repayment, he ended up spending 9.71. Similarly, having spent 7.98 on repayment of interest on internal loan, it exceeded the budget of 3.71. Now you notice something about Zamfara State. This state did a lot of borrowing, a lot of income coming in at spent on recurrent, we can infer safely that this state really have a challenge with its um, finances. But the goal of this program, which we've done now for about 40, 40 months, 40 months, sorry, 40 weeks, is that Nigerian state has all it takes. Nigerian state has all it takes for each of them to be independent of the federal government allocation. Congratulations, your search for buyers abroad is over, through the help of the Eureka Pack. The Eureka Pack helps you do seven things in order to get buyers abroad. It shows you how to 1. Get prepared to get buyers abroad. 2. Get the online tools to deploy to get buyers abroad. 3. Get list of markets with demands for your products. 4. Get the list of importers in that market. 5. Get the contacts of importers in that market. 6. Get the export contracts from the contact details of the importers. 7. Get favorable export contract terms. The Eureka Pack shows you how to enter the billion dollar markets available for your products across the world at a very discounted rate of 60,000 Naira. The valuable materials that you get upon purchase include two manuals and 27 videos explaining and demonstrating how to use the manuals to find buyers abroad. We know you are elated already and interested in ordering for the Eureka Pack right away. Place your order via a WhatsApp chat to 0809 999. 3142 or email to info at 3 timpexcom You can get this pack for just 60,000 Naira. Grab your copy now. So what are the potential opportunities that reside in Zamfara State? The state is basically a agricultural state with over 80% of the people engaged in various forms of agriculture. Someone is saying something. I think it's wrong to say the state cannot survive without a federal allocation. Having, it, having said that, that, that Nehesti is the mother of invention, denying the state federal allocation, and you'll be surprised they will come up with to survive and try. That's where, at the we are basically saying the same thing. I'm saying that they can't survive without federal allocation, and I'm saying that they have what it takes to survive without federal government. And the fact that federal allocation coming is why they are not able to survive. So we are still saying the same thing. They cannot survive without federal allocation. That is the truth. But the fact is that they have what it takes to survive. But as it is right now, they have not put system and structure in place to be able to survive. But the fact is that they can actually survive if they do what they need to do. And I agree with you that necessity, of course, is the mother of invention. But the fact remains that many Nigerian state uh, governor did not come into general revenue. They came in to share the money, share the money. <laughs> they came in to share the money. They did not come in general revenue. So I'm not surprised at what we are seeing. So um, major agricultural products from this state include guinea, um, guinea corn, millet, maize, rice, granite, coconut, and cotton, tobacco, and beans. So, and this, this potential, this product, 
and industrialized the state. Government has made it a carnal policy to encourage entrepreneurs, both foreign and indigenous, to invest in the state, particularly manufacturing sector. Industrial concern exists in the state, and this includes modern bakery in Guzo, Guzo oil mill, which is the first vegetation, vegetable oil mill in Nigeria to extract oil from cotton seed. Zamfara textile industry, Guzo and Guzo, uh, Guzo seed factory, and cotton jewelry at Guzo. The people of Zamfara state also are engaged in weaving and turning of local dye um, and design material and other woven products. Although cutting guinea, weaving, dyeing, and long established local activity, it was not until 1960 that the modern textile plant opened in the town. A seed oil mill and soybeans oil processing plant were also built. Beside cutting clothes, peanut, guzo, export, export tobacco grown in Shokoto River flood pain, chicken and goat to Zaria. Now, this state, from all indications, have what it takes. The people raise cattle, sheep, donkey, horse, camel, cherry millet, sorghum rice, cowpea beans. This state can produce cotton. They can export cotton and they can use cotton to generate income. But like I said, unfortunately, the state is not taking advantage of this, which is why we're having this conversation in the first place. The state is definitely not taking advantage of this, which is why we're having this conversation in the first place. So let's look at the purchaser of those products that Zamfara State is capable of producing. But more importantly, the potential, the volume traded for this product around the world. The volume traded. This state can produce millet, market size of millet, 201 million, with market in Europe, Asia, and Africa. The state produced granite, market size of granite, 3.19 billion with market in Europe, in America, North America, even in Africa, and of course, in Asia, China, Vietnam, Indonesia. In Africa, Algeria, South Africa, Tanzania, Libya, Kenya, and Rwanda. The state produced cotton, market size of cotton, 15.4 billion. China, Vietnam, Bangladesh, Indian cotton, Indonesia, Turkey, are the major markets with Mexico and Egypt. In Africa, Egypt, Mauritius, South Africa, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia are major importers of raw cotton. How about corn? How about corn? $36.3 billion with markets in Japan, South uh, Korea, Iran, Spain, Mexico, Germany, Egypt, Colombia, Peru. And in Africa, $3.73 billion. Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, South Africa. Tobacco. This state also produced tobacco. 10.787 billion. Tobacco, 10.7 billion. Belgium, Russia, Germany, Poland, Indonesia, China, United States, Dominican Republic, Mexico, in Africa, almost a billion dollars. Egypt, Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, Mozambique, Kenya, Malawi. Nigeria is importing raw tobacco, even though Nigeria is capable of producing this raw tobacco. Then we have wheat and rice. Look at wheat. Nigeria spent a billion dollars to import wheat. 44.1 billion. Indonesia, Turkey, Japan, China, Egypt, Algeria, Brazil, Morocco, Sudan, Italy, Netherlands, Belgium, Mexico are the major markets for wheat. In Africa, can you see the wheat import in Africa? 12.5. Wheat, wheat export in the world, 44. Africa is doing more than 25%. 12.5 billion dollars. And you can see Nigeria doing a significant part of that. A significant part of that. Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Sudan are major markets. Then rice. Iran, China, Japan, United States, France, Germany, Italy, 
24.7 billion dollars in Africa. Benin Republic is the largest importer of rice in Africa. But you and I know that right from Benin Republic come to Nigeria. Because Benin is not up to Lagos population. Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, Senegal, Cameroon, Ghana, Mozambique. So what is the proposal we have for this state, Zamfara State? If you look at this value chain of agri, production, harvesting and transport, primary processing, storage, secondary processing, packaging, marketing and sales, logistics, export and distribution. In Nigeria, you typically have the same SME involved from beginning to the end. I know a particular woman who is involved from production to export. Of course, I've told her she has to stop that because it's inefficient, but that's what happened in Nigeria. It's creating an efficient value chain operator, low process capacity and low output, few job creation, low quality and packaging, high cost of production, non-competitive product in the export market. Now, imagine the state government says for uh, maybe cotton, to produce cotton seed, cotton seed oil, I buy my cotton from SME1 as SME2, there's a large processing plant of government with PPP arrangement where I can take my raw material to the process when I buy from SME1. As an SME2, I focus only on marketing, sales, logistics, export, and distribution. This creates efficient value chain operators, high price capacity and, and output, good quality packaging, low cost of production, uh, competitive product in the export market, increased job creation, when you increase job creation, you reduce inequality, and of course, you reduce insecurity. In order to support exporters in Zamfara State to enter the export market in Africa, Europe, and America in a secure and sustainable way, the state can partner with representative at destination to secure contract, set up warehouse for pickup by wholesaler at destination, set up an entity, a distributor at destination, Partner with individual independent agents of this destination and organize a sponsor manufacturer for exhibition in the export market. How can Zamfara State profit directly and make money directly from export? Look at it. So let's assume Zamfara State focus on granite. It has 1.5 million hectares of arable land, 1.5 million hectares of arable land. Yield per hectare of granite is 2.5. Possible yield 1.145 million metric tons at $1.5, $1,500 uh, unit price. This state can generate 1.65 billion from granite. If we remove the cost of farming, the profit of farmers, the cost of export, the state can see generate 512 billion naira. I want you to check the budget of this state is 160 billion in 2022. So that means this state on granite alone can actually survive on granite alone can actually survive this state on granite alone can actually survive how can this happen the state partner with private sector provide funds to them this the private sector form farmers in the state into cooperatives provide input give them purchase order with a guarantee provide training and support give them mandate to go and farm granite and the state government will buy off through the special purpose vehicle. That word has been abused now. You know, when you hear SPV now, it's the election season, a lot of issue around SPV. <laughs> SPV provide collection center for harvest, clean and process the uh, product for export. The SPV source for buyers, do documentation and shipment, present document to buyer for payment abroad, pay farmers and share the balance with the state, pay his partner, and the state can use his share 
of days for development. The impact of this model for state government goes beyond generation of revenue. It has humongous impact on employment generation and increased economic activity in the state. This, in my opinion, is a more effective and efficient and enduring model for diversifying the economy of any state in Nigeria. This model can also be replicated by the federal government at the federal level for the export of minerals. All right, thank you very much, everyone. It's been an interesting journey. Like I said, we'll be rounding up this last week. I'm hoping it's going to be an interesting session as we round off on this series that we've done for almost 40 weeks. And then we'll be starting a new one in, in February as we start discussing, uh, which is a challenge for people having talking about the issue of getting buyer for export business. But this time around, we'll be focusing on how to leverage opportunity on the internet. See you next week and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.